Hi folks, if you own a midi pad like this, which I found on eBay for 15 bucks, and you want to do stuff like this, hey, OBS started and switch your scenes. You'll need a software called MIDI Key to Key and watch this video. So if you have a cork nanopad like this or anything else that produces MIDI, then go to the page 75r.de slash MIDI key to key with the two as a number. And you see the home page of my program and uh, there's a download section here and download this Windows installer file. Goes into my downloads. It's an MSI file. For Windows. There it is. It is small. Everything will go very fast. So then open it up. And uh, if this happens, that says in English, the computer is protected because this installation file could be dangerous, but it is not. Okay. Then this is the setup wizard. It will copy the program into program files x86 and uh, produces a shortcut. That's all it does. Now it is in my start menu under the letter M. MIDI key to key. And here it is. So first of all, you need to select a MIDI input device. Since this nanopad is connected to the computer via USB, there it is. Select this, and then you're ready to go to produce your action you want to do. Just click the Lock to Window button, and this opens up the MIDI lock. And then nothing happens because you need to push the Start button. So now it's listening to the MIDI input. And you see, when I play these buttons, or press the buttons, all events that are happening on the, uh, the MIDI input are recorded. And newer events appear at the top of the list. So this uh, nanopad is set to its default settings. That means pressing a button produces a note on event that's the same like you would play a key on your keyboard, on your synthesizer or piano. So on what we use will be a note on event. Each time I press a button, it produces a note on and a note off. So you can use both of them, but we only need one. So we take at first the first button and see now here in the list, this is a note on, playing a C4 with the velocity, the speed, I hit the button. And now we double click this and can produce a keyboard action or starting a program with that. We will start a no program, we just generate a keyboard action. It's done by clicking into this blue grayish uh, box and then hit your special keys like Control alt or shift first. I use uh, Control alt and shift the same time to be sure that no other program will use these uh, key commands. And press the one. You see, it has received these keys and uh, the blue box showed, shows you what you pressed in the white box. Uh, you can edit these uh, if you wish to add more special keys uh, like Windows because when I press now the Windows button go in the blue box, clear, blue box, Windows button oh, 
yeah, I recognize it as the uh, Win L left Windows button. But if you tap the tap key, it won't record it. It tries to do some action on this. So if you wish to use the tap key, write in tap. But normally you will use the, the Control L or Shift buttons. That's all. Plus a normal key that produces any output in your text editor, a letter, uh, a number, whatever. So again, Control Alt Shift One, and you see the one on my main keyboard is uh, written as D1. If I push the uh, numpad buttons, it will write down numpad two. That's the difference. If we're going to use these, just then uh, type in instead of D1 numpad one, but we will stay with that. Now there are two other checkboxes here. React on the first value and React on the second value. The 9037F data on this key a MIDI event means 90 is a note on on channel 1. If there's another MIDI channel your device is producing, this number would be different even it was a node on event too. So in the 30 and the 7F are two data fields. Um, the, the 30 means it's the key C4 and the 7F is the velocity you you pressed on the pad or keyboard because this little pad is also capable to, to do uh, velocity recognition. And uh, what we want to do is just react on pressing a key, no matter how hard I hit the key. So if we would turn on the second checkbox, it would react on the second uh, value, 7F, and uh, to produce your action, you would need to hit uh, the key exactly with the same velocity what's really hard to do. So we ignore the seven, the second value and just take the 30, react on the first value, what means the key C4, that's important. So, and then save. The new action, 9030XX was saved. The XX means we ignore the second value. Okay, that's it. So now let's have a look into OBS again. I already programmed to have uh, my hotkey, Control Alt and Shift plus the one to react and uh, switch the scene one on. Let's see what happens. There it is. No other key do anything. It's fine for now. Now I show you how fast it is to set all the six scenes I have. Um, to be set up in both in MIDI key to key and also in OBS. So at the second key, I look for the note on event, double click, shift control alt two, save, next three, double click number three, save, Press the four, double, four, the five, double click, five, and the six, six, safe. That's it. Now in OBS, settings, hotkeys, for all our scenes, the same hotkeys. And you see that's done really quickly. Four, five, and the number six is here. So, and maybe we uh, uh, mute the uh, desktop audio, then let's take the letter S in connection with Control Alt and Shift. So, and program that later on our nanopad. So, that's it.
So, and this is working not only if uh, now OBS in the foreground and has to focus. Just let's take another program. The, this Explorer now is in the foreground, has to focus, but OBS is still recognizing our commands. That's important. If you play a game in stream, you don't have to, to bother. So that's all. It's up and running. <clears throat> what you can do is close the uh, lock window and minimize it. It will minimize always to the tray. And uh, if you open the tray, here it is. You can double click it to reopen it or uh, or right click to open its context menu. You can open the main window. Stop listening. If you do that, no action is executed. You can start the action again. Start listening. There it is. Or exit the program. A double click opens it. So, what else can we do? What about starting OBS or um, the mute button? I forgot that. Now let's quickly program uh, the key number 7 on the nanopad to mute and unmute the desktop audio. Lock window. Just one pr press on this key. Has to be done. That's it. You see the uh, the speaker symbol in OBS is already red. Means it's muted. We can toggle that with our key. Now, if we want to start a program with MIDI key to key, it's no problem. Let's program a shortcut to OBS itself. For doing this, I will take the uh, the key number 12, press it once, here's the note on of this event. We do not need a keyboard action on that, we need to start a program. So we need to set this on active. So you can type in a program name manually and uh, you can choose it with this button. This is already the directory where OBS 64-bit is in. I take this and you see it's encapsulated because there are white spaces in and if you have white spaces, put these around. So some programs need to know where they live and OBS is such a program. Uh, without saying the working directory of the program, it won't start or produce error messages. So we need to know where the working directory of OBS is. Normally it is this path, but to be sure, this is a shortcut to OBS that was generated by the OBS setup program. And uh, let's have a look. This is execute in, this is the path we need. So press Control A and Control C to copy and just copy it in. You also could uh, choose this dialog box to, to navigate to the directory you, you know, but it's always better to, to use a shortcut of which you know it works. So now <laughs> our path is gone again, so here we are. Hit save. And that's it. See what happens if we uh, push the uh, 12 button. Yeah, and there is OBS started and the other keys also work. What happens if we hit it again? Now OBS is a program that wants to be alone. It does not allow to open a second instance. So this is not working with OBS. Other tools will work again. Okay, now if everything is set up, you can check auto start listening. That means if MIDI key is started, it's listening already. And then try this, OBS starts, okay. And uh, if you check this checkbox, minimize to tray, 
This works only with auto status active. And, uh, and the program now MIDI key to key when started directly minimizes to tray and given this message it's minimized and is listening. So check this out. F12 starts OBS. And now don't be confused if we use our other buttons, they don't work. Just once click OBS, then you can leave the focus and then they will work. Okay. This is what we can do with the auto start. And what else is possible? Now, we can edit or delete an existing action. The actions are here in this drop down. They are numbered 1 to 8, and uh, which MIDI data is in, and uh, which note on or any other event is shown. Let's take the last one we made. This is starting the uh, OBS program. Hit edit. Now this dialog looks almost the one when creating a new action. Start program is active with these parameters. So now we can edit, as you saw it before, these, or we can even add a, uh, a button, a key command to it, save this and you will have on this MIDI node two actions at the same time. Now this does not make much sense because uh, when uh, OBS starts it needs some time and the, uh, the uh, keyboard action will be executed almost at the same time. But let's produce, let's generate a brand new one, lock to window, let's take the nano pad button 8 double click on this. Let's do a keyboard shortcut, take the uh, number two, and start another program for a small test. Just put in calc, this is the calculator, save. Okay, now hit the button number eight. It starts the calculator, and this at the same time, it produced the uh, key number two. Let's do the same. Switch over. Oh no, it wasn't the eighth. Sorry. Switch over to scene two and starts the calculator. So you can use generate keyboard action start program same time and both is active. And there's a third thing that's not choosable. It's an idea. It's prepared to, to work, uh, to let the buttons work like a, a folder. That you need open f uh, uh, a virtual folder and then hit another button that is already assigned to another action. But uh, this is, or think of it like it's like a shift button. And so you can extend your 12 or 16, whatever uh, paths you have, two more functions. <clears throat> I don't know if it will, if I will put this into the program. It's an idea. Tell me what you think about it. So there's a little more to explore. Uh, therefore, these checkboxes can only be changed by stopping the listening and Listen to SysX system exclusive messages means uh, these are special commands for MIDI devices. Normally they dump their program settings and uh, make special things. This is an experimental function. Uh, check it out, but um, don't expect actions that you really can use with MIDI key to key. Um, lock to file. Let's you choose a file and then what's in your lock window <coughs> is shown, uh, will be written to that file um, for later analysis. The channel listeners are always on. That means the program listens to all 16 MIDI channels. You can filter channels out and by turning them off. My nanopad is turned to 
switch to channel number one. <coughs> so this works if I set it on the channel number two. It does not show any events, so you can filter different devices out if you want to. And uh, at last, this start stop menu acts the same as the start stop button here or the start stop button in the tray menu. Uh, you can load and save settings, but this is actually not needed. Uh, MIDI key to key save its settings, everything you edit it automatically when you exit the program. And it loads its settings when starting. Safe settings could be useful if you do a lot of changes and uh, <laughs> are afraid that your windows crash. So you can save in between the settings and uh, go on working. The settings are stored in your documents folder. This is the documents folder and it produces a folder uh, called MIDI key to key and there's just one single file settings there. This is your settings file and even if you remove uninstall the program this file will uh, this file will remain and uh, you can copy this for backup or uh, move it to another computer. Um, uninstalling the program is easy as you know from uh, other software uh, go to the system settings the control panel programs and features and look for midi key to key in the list midi key mid here it is and you can see uninstall it's removed completely except your settings file and the last thing in the help menu you will be leading to the uh, website. This is the main website. Push the help button. It opens the help site. That's the same instruction I gave you in this video. And you can check for update and see if the uh, version is the last one. Check for update says the checking succeeded. And uh, but your version 1.6.0.8 is the latest version. Okay, if there's a new version, go to the website and go to download and download the latest version. Um, you can just run the MSI installer file and uh, there's no need to remove the old version. You should close MIDI key to key before doing that, but it will automatically update your existing version. So that's it for MIDI key to key. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you find it uh, useful. And uh, if you have any comments to that, put it down below or use uh, our feedback form, uh, which is here. Contact. There are suggested topics to do that. I found a bug if you've find anything or I need help I want you to suggest a feature that's uh, very important to me if you have any ideas just fill out the form and tell me what you uh, would like to have built in it into MIDI key to key or just leave a comment please use this and in the end please buy me a beer if you like the program just a little thing donations are not are still not uh, uh, available I put this into uh, just a little um, PayPal uh, donate button. So this is MIDI key to key. I hope you find it useful. And uh, I show you quickly another little program I did uh, if you are a Twitch user. Uh, if you are a Twitch user and stream often and stream different games all the times, uh, you will uh, edit your Twitch page all the time. Uh, now these, this is uh, saying I play Battlefield 1 and I'm a noob. <laughs> and if you, you change your games very often, with Twitch control you can set uh, 
predefined uh, presets. You can make new ones and uh, now switch from Battlefield to CS CSGO. Just activate. Okay, it says CSGO. It's not enough. This is my channel name. Activate. And now, channel update was successful. And uh, let's see what it says. Reload the uh, Twitch page and see Counter-Strike Global Fantasy is go. Okay, so you can uh, <coughs> save your presets very quickly and just select one and say activate. Let's switch over to Flight Simulator successful this is very handsome if you often uh, switch games like i do so there is flying fsx online so you see this little tool is also uh, nice to have you can download it for free from this web page but i will uh, uh, provide all the links in the down in the comments of the video it's 75x.de slash dl slash twitch control <laughs> okay thank you for watching leave some comments and see you bye bye